We're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. After releasing new video captured by military pilots and authenticating older footage leaked online, the Pentagon says something is definitely out there. Call them UFOs if you want. The Pentagon is going with unidentified aerial phenomena. Fast, agile, and totally mysterious. <laughs> and now everyone wants answers. Are they alien? Are they human? Are they hostile? There's something out there that was better than our airplane. If it's something of outside, outside this planet, that might actually be better than the fact that we've seen some technological leap on behalf of the Chinese or the Russians. Jack, what is that thing? How the hell should I know? A mainstay of pop culture, UFOs have always captured the imagination. But what is real? The sightings do go back years and several presidents. Even the ever-rational Barack Obama maintains an open mind talking about them on a late-night show. Uh, there's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. Intelligence officials will brief Congress on all this next month. To discuss all of this, we have Chris Rutkowski, a prominent Canadian ufologist and science writer, and Matthew Hayes, a UFO historian. Thanks very much for joining us on the program tonight. Uh, Chris, I want to just start with, with the U.S. How do you describe the way in which these objects were moving? Well, certainly, depending on whether you're talking about what was seen in the videos versus what was reported to be seen by the pilots, on the videos, the, uh, the objects appear to be moving in some unusual erratic manner, but according to some, the analysis shows that these things may actually be in some cases stationary or not moving very fast at all. So it's a problem in, in the interpretation. Yeah, and Matthew, I am struck because it, this was not just one-offs. These were multiple military pilots seeing the same kind of thing day after day over years. That's right, and it, and it goes back quite far. I mean, I in my own research, I go back decades, not just a few years, but back to the 40s where uh, these claims are not necessarily common, but we've seen them before. And that was the thing that struck me the most is that of all of these claims that are being made, uh, they could be straight out of the 1950s. Chris, why, why reveal all of this now? When I look at the American context, why talk about it at this point? Well, that's actually a very good question uh, because uh, as Matt was uh, saying, we've seen a lot of this before. Uh, but in this particular case, uh, there's been a, a lot of intense interest. I think a lot of uh, people were very interested in hearing what Barack Obama had to say, the fact that even though it was a comedy talk show, he actually paused and said, let's get serious for a moment. Um, but uh, the Defense Department has been under a lot of pressure uh, ever since some of these videos were leaked, and we're not entirely sure who leaked the original one back in 19, uh, 2007. Uh, and it's caused a lot of people to think this could be it. This could be the year of disclosure, even though I, I doubt that's what we're going to be seeing. Okay, let's be clear about what you're saying. What is the year of disclosure? What would the disclosure be? Well, people, are, I think, are expecting that uh, the United States government is finally going to say, yeah, we have the disks or that UFOs are real or that the aliens are here. And yet that's not really what we're seeing. The, the videos themselves might have some interesting explanations. Some people have already explained the videos away. We're not sure what the pilots have seen, um, but uh, there's no question these uh, objects have been seen for, for many years. Um, and uh, a lot of interpretations suggest uh, that these things are capable of, of some sort of uh, flight and propulsion that we don't understand. And yet we can't really say that just from these videos. Now, just because something can't be explained doesn't mean that it's alien. But, Matthew, there are multiple reports as well. I look to your work in Canada. Yeah, absolutely. My work stretches back as late as the 1940s, actually, uh, when it all began, 1947, with Roswell and a couple other uh, incidents. So this goes back quite far. It's not just a matter of a few years, but a matter of a few decades, um, 75 years or so. So there is actually quite a long history to this. Many of the setting reports that are coming out, many of the things described are very, very similar, if not exactly the same as a lot of reports, um, especially from the 1950s. I've been telling this to a few people that you could just switch the dates on a lot of these articles and they'd be straight out of the 50s. Uh, we've been hearing 
uh, about imminent disclosure for a very long time. And so I'm somewhat doubtful that that's going to come to pass, but at the very least, there is a lot of continuity over the years. Uh, Chris, what are some of the things that you know of from Canada? Well, in fact, uh, uh, things are being seen right up till now. I know uh, Matt's research uh, covered up until about the 90s. Uh, I continue on after that. Uh, as recently as May the 9th, there was a report through Transport Canada of a Delta Airlines flight that was flying between Fairbanks, uh, Alaska, and Minneapolis. It was right over Hudson Bay, Saskatchewan, and the pilot reported to air traffic control that he had seen uh, an unusual light uh, passing above him. He was already flying at 39,000 feet, and according to air traffic control, there was nothing around him. So we get these reports all the time. They continue. Uh, there's nothing to say that they're alien, uh, but the question is, uh, if things are being reported to Transport Canada, there's always a, a question as to, is does this endanger uh, passengers? Is there a problem with the technology? Is there a problem with the, the pilot's observation? And I think that alone suggests that we should be looking at UFOs a little more seriously. And yet, when we talk about UFOs and seriously, I, I mean, Chris, I would go back to you. Surely there has been over the time of you being a ufologist, there have been people who have immediately dismissed what you do. Um, yes and no. Uh, I'm not uh, the type of person who goes around with a tinfoil hat and saying that aliens are here, you know, guard your children. What I'm saying is, is that uh, there are a lot of UFO reports out there. In fact, in Canada, there's around a thousand uh, UFO reports filed every year with various agencies, including Transport Canada uh, and the uh, the uh, De Department of National Defense, the Canadian Armed Forces. Um, and uh, polls suggest that one in 10 Canadians believe they've seen UFOs. There's a lot of people out there who uh, have had experiences. And the question is, what is being seen? And we can explain most cases, uh, but there's a small residual amount every year that uh, sort of make us think, Let's try and understand what's going on. And I think this is what's happening in the United States, that people want to know what's this residual amount. Yeah, when you, when you don't have an explanation for something, those questions persist. Matthew, Chris, thanks so much for your time. Thank thanks you.